Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we have the brand new Tier 7 Premium German Cruiser, the Weimar import to review for you guys today. As always, big shout out to the patrons that allow for these reviews to take place. As many of you guys know, I am not a CC, I get none of these ships for free, so I have to finance these reviews through the ad revenue or through the, the donations via Patreon, which is the best place to support the channel, besides of course just watching the videos. If, if you would like to do so, the link to that is in the description down below. There's tiers of all various price ranges depending upon how generous you guys are feeling. And again, huge shout out to those guys whose names should have just appeared up on screen for making this review possible. So guys, the Weimar, the ship that went through a pretty interesting development cycle. And of course, as always, our department does a fantastic job. The ship model itself looks absolutely beautiful here. Lots of little detail all over the deck. And just, again, always art department. You guys definitely know what you're doing. Got a nice little nameplate right there going on and all that jazz. But the Weimar, yes, like I just said, its development cycle was pretty interesting. The ship has been compared to the Mainz because it's rightly so. It was basically, no joke, a better Mainz when it was first announced with its original stats. I believe it had similar, if not better, range, similar DPM, and, and just everything about it was pretty much the Mainz at Tier 7. Uh, but of course, since it was Tier 7, it had pretty much all the original value gun-wise of the mines it was well better mines but of course things have changed but it is still of course a pretty close case to the mines because basically the mines was a well is a hipper with the 150 with the 150 millimeter guns and the four turrets instead of the hippers normal loadout and they did the same thing with the york so this is a york hull with Mainz's guns, essentially, with a couple of things tweaked about them. And it's, well, well, we'll get, we'll, we'll get to that in the review section. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. But let's go ahead and get on into the ship stats and such. So, armor layout, I mean, it's a, it's a York. <laughs> no surprise there. So we got a 16mm bow, uh, 25mm upper deck plating here, 16mm uh, stern, a 51 millimeter strip on the stern, 80 millimeter armor belt, uh, no special strips on the front of the ship. And there's her citadel. It's kind of up out of the water, but it does have this slanted 30 millimeter plate right here. So it'll be a little difficult for cruisers to citadel you, but of course, anything with large guns will, of course, just go right through that. And again, if you play the York, you, you know what to expect out of this hull. So for ability wise, she has 32,000 hit points, and again, no captain skills or modules have been applied. Well, they were applied, but I took them all off because I did play this strip, the, this ship, quite a bit on a stream on stream on Friday night. But anyway, all that has been removed. So yep, 32,000 hit points, 10% torpedo damage reduction. Of course, her guns. She gets 12 150 millimeter guns with a base load time of 8 seconds, 180 time of 23.7 seconds, maximum dispersion of 130 meters. Her HE shell, it is of course that glorious German HE. So you get 8% chance of starting a fire per shell with 12 shells, that's pretty good. And they can pin 38 millimeters at tier 7, which is really, really, really good for tier 7 when you get into top tier matches. That means too that this is actually, well, being up tier to tier 9 sucks. But if you're going to be up tier to tier 9, You'd want to be in a cruiser that can cross that 32 millimeter threshold, and the Weimar does do that. All right, her AP shell, she has 3,900 maximum AP damage. Her base range is 14 kilometers, and her AP and HE shells have initial velocity of 960 meters a second, so some very fast flying shells. Uh, secondary, she has eight of the 105 millimeter guns, they reload in 3.4 seconds. They have a 5% chance of causing a fire. They can pin 26 millimeters of armor. They have a maximum range of 6.3 kilometers, and their shells come out at 900 meters a second. Although, of course, this isn't a secondary built ship. This is mostly just contributing to her AA. Torpedoes, she does get some. She has 12 torpedoes and, f and four launchers, 3x4. 
and they're the normal German torpedo, 6 km maximum range, 64 knot top speed. They are detectable from 1.3 km away, and they reload in 68 seconds. They do a maximum damage of 13,700. Her A, she has an A rating of 55, which is okay-ish. This is where like the, the Mainz is a little bit better. Well, of course the Mainz is better to tier 8. But the Mainz is more of an AA ship. This one, not so much. I mean, tier 755 isn't terrible. But, I mean, it's either you see tier 6 carriers or tier 8 carriers. There, you know, there's no tier 7 carriers. So, it's either okay AA or kind of useless AA, depending upon what you get matched against. But she gets four of the single 20mm guns. She gets eight of the dual 20mm guns. She gets four of the quad 20mm guns. She gets six of the single 40mm guns. Then, of course, the 105s are dual purpose. And her AA range is 5.2 kilometers. Alright, maximum speed is 31 knots base. She has a turning circle radius of 650 meters and a rudder shift time of 8.8 .8 .8 seconds. Concealment base is 12.8 kilometers, which is only 1.2 kilometers away from her maximum firing range, which isn't great <laughs> so for her consumables she gets spotter or fighter she gets engine boost and she gets your choice of hydro or dfaa all right i'm going to go ahead slap a commander and module build and flags on here and we'll we will reconvene here in a moment all righty so since this ship does have mainz's guns i pretty much have the same thing that i have on my mainz so we have main armaments mod 1 to keep those 150mm turrets in the fight and also to kind of keep the torpedoes in the fight. I mean, there are German torpedoes that kind of explode when someone just drops a wrench on them. Uh, engine room protection, enemy systems mod 1, and propulsion mod 1. And of course, you need to keep the spotting aircraft on. This is a huge thing that the ship definitely needs. And also keep hydroacoustic search on as well. For the commander build, we went with MLG turrets, consumable specialist, last stand, pyrotechnician, the safety circle, adrenaline rush, superintendent, top grade gunner, and then concealment expert. So now the ship has a concealment range of 11.5 kilometers, which is very nice considering how long you can get the guns range out to with a spotting aircraft which is just around 18 kilometers she now has a top speed of 32.6 knots and her guns now have a dispersion of 121 meters and a 180 time of 19.7 seconds now now something to note about Luchens 2 is that he does have the main battery loader skill where once you get 140 shell hits with your main battery guns that gives you a boost to your reload time by 7.5 percent which is very 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 nice in the Vimer and this is pretty much the same captain build that I, that I would run with the Mainz to and it works fantastically well there and I can tell you it does work here pretty well on the Vimer as well all right so I'm gonna go ahead go ahead and pop some combat footage up and I'll meet you guys there in a voiceover Alright guys, voiceover Mountbatten here, and what about the Vimer? Well, I'm going to be straight with you. If you like the playstyle of the Mainz, which is throttle juking, burning the world down, get the Mainz. This thing is essentially a tier 7 Mainz with a little bit of a switch up here and there. But the ships play exactly the same. I played this ship on stream for a pretty good portion of the stream on Friday night, and I played it just like the Mainz, and it does some things better than the, uh, than the Mainz, but overall, the Mainz is the better choice. So what is it that it does better than the Mainz that might intrigue you to buy this ship? Well, Mainz doesn't get that engine boost consumable. And the main way that I play Mainz, and that most of the people that I know playing Mainz, is that you play it as a throttle juker. Meaning that you point your bow out away from the target, get your stern pointed toward them, and you go back for a little bit, you slam it into full ahead, 
crank it down to a quarter speed, crank it back into reverse. You just keep playing with the throttle just to throw off the enemy shots. And I've done that in mind to fantastically well um, results. And it's pretty funny too. You can do this as close as like 12 kilometers with some ships and that they, they'll still miss your shots. So the, um, well, they'll miss you with their shots. And with the engine boost consumable on the Vimer, it can do that a little better. And it's very, 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 very funny to see it work out well, especially in the Vimer, in a situation like the one you're watching right now, which is where I'm in a tier 9 game, and I'm dodging shells that would just absolutely annihilate my ship by just a couple of kilometers, well not kilometers, a couple of hundred meters here and there. And that, that's good fun. And with the spotting aircraft, you can get these guns out to an 18 kilometer range, which again, on a tier seven ship that can see tier five games is pretty long. But when you're in a tier nine game and your spotting aircraft is down, that kinda sucks. Because now you have a 14 kilometer range at tier nine. And with the changes to matchmaker, we all know that tier seven, it's up to tier 9 a lot more now than it used to. Tier 7 used to be the golden spot for where you'd be top tier most often. But nowadays, it ain't that. So, this ship, I mean, I had several matches, as you, as you guys saw on stream. While I was in tier 9 games, and I did manage to do like 100,000 damage, like 94, 95, 96. I don't think I ever broke 100k. Um, just because, at the end of the day, it is a tier 7 ship and a tier 9 game, a tier 7 cruiser. To be exact, in a tier 9 game, those don't tend to live too long, especially the ones that don't have a heal. But the ship did perform well. I cannot deny that the ship did perform well. But I, if I was in the Mainz, I would have probably done a lot better. Now, the reason I'm comparing it so much to the Mainz is because it's got the Mainz's guns. They're, they're literally the Mainz's guns with a two second longer reload time and less range, which is what allows it to perform so well. But if it wasn't strapped to a tier 7 hull, and strapped to the tier 8 hull that the Mainz has with more HP and better armor, I probably would have survived for a lot longer and done even better. And again, the engine boost is very nice and very useful, but i, I just rather have the Mainz. Plus it's a tier 8. In tier 8 getting up to, to tier 10, it sucks, but it sucks a lot less than tier 7 being up tiered to tier 9. Get what I'm saying? But other than that, other than comparing it to the mines, what else does, does the ship do? Well, the guns. Of course, the 150mm German guns with the German HE with an 8% chance of starting a fire. No need to take IFHE here, which means you can build into that fire chance and get it up even higher. And with Pyrotechnician, you now have a 10% chance of starting a fire with the Pyrotechnician skill and the flags on. So a 10% chance of starting a fire on guns with 38mm pin at tier 7 is fantastic so yeah if you just want to beat the crap out of some tier 5 ships when you're top tier in Vimer fantastic it's fantastic for that and you do outright bully things when you are top tier but again how often does that happen with tier 7 ships so hmm and the 14 kilometer range again when you're top tier doesn't really matter too much I mean the ship with that engine boost is definitely able to get within range when you're top tier and just you know throttle juke go back and forth play with your throttle and just throw off all those tier 5 ship shots and you can absolutely just murder dds the 960 meters a second velocity on these guns makes aiming incredibly easy and this thing will murder dds even tier 8 dds and tier 9 dds because uh, again it's minus guns it's, it's great for that and that means, too, when you do have your spotter plane up and you're firing at maximum range, it's way easier to get shots on ships at 18 kilometers with this thing than, like, an American cruiser whose shells take a year and a half to get there. So you have that going for you. The guns are great and definitely the highlight of the ship. So the torpedoes, though, I mean, they're German torps. When you really need them, they get blown up. Do I need to say more? I mean... If they're still around and you're that close to a ship, you're probably about to die. If it's a ship that you can't murder with your guns already, so something like a heavy cruiser or a battleship, and you're that close with no escape, you're going to blow up, so they're nice for throwing at ships before you get blown up, 
or if you're pulling off an island ambush they're nice for that too but they're definitely not a part of your main toolbox they're just kind of there if you need it kind of like that extra dollar bill you find in your in your sofa um aa what i said in ports pretty much true when you've got a tier 6 CV, it's good enough to where if you're with another ship or two, you can pretty much tell them to go take a hike. But if you're in a, in a tier 8 game or a tier 9 game with a tier 8 CV, you um, may want to find something American to go and sail with. Uh, maneuverability, again, with the engine boost, the ship's very maneuverable. Throwing it in full and then throwing it in full reverse. Uh, the top speed with the speed flag is 32.6 knots. I think with the engine boost you can get up to like 35, 36 knots, something like that. Although that's not really what it's meant for. It's meant for, of course, the increased acceleration and deceleration when you're throttle juking. So I never really did a top speed run. But again, that engine boost is really the only reason I would see picking this up over the mines. But it's nice and maneuverable too, so it helps out some there. Um, consumer, like we've already talked about, 11.5 kilometer range. It's fairly stealthy for a tier 7 cruiser. Not the stealthiest one out there, though. But again, having a decent concealment range and help in uh, letting you just disengage from any situation that you don't want to be in is very useful. But that is also hindered by that 14 kilometer maximum range when you're in a tier 9 game and you really are just leaning on that spotting aircraft to help you out now you can take the eye in the sky captain skill that cuts the cooldown time in half but also cuts the action time of the spotter down in half too but it does also give you two more charges but still cutting down that reload time in half would wind up giving you a um 30 second runtime of your spotting aircraft so you could get like shoot um maybe 10 salvos off no not even 10 you can get maybe uh four or five salvos off then you'd have to wait for a hundred seconds for your aircraft to come off a cooldown but you can also build into it too with like the spotting aircraft modification if you want to buy that in the armory for i think for coal which would pad that time a little bit back up but in my opinion, it's, it's just not worth it because, again, you're losing so much time on that um, on that spotting aircraft. That spotting aircraft being up for so long is so vital to you doing well at Tier 9. Unless you just want to delegate yourself to DD hunting and you still got to get close at Tier 9, which is darn near suicidal for this ship. And, of course, like I said, if you have Luchins, definitely slap them on here. Uh, definitely makes this ship a lot better, again, with his main battery uh reload skill the uh, yeah main battery loader talent that helps out a lot when you get 140 shell hits with, with which well with with a which with a ship there we go that has 12 guns that reload in eight second space is pretty easy to do and i think i did it in just about every game i had in the vimer that went over like the uh the 10 minute mark not a very hard thing to do and definitely a, a pickup you want to get so overall like i said the start of this this section just get mines it's just a little bit more pricey and it does a lot better it's in a lot better place matchmaking wise too being at tier eight the armor's better the ship and the ship's just overall better of course because it's a tier eight the only reason to get this is if you really like the mines and you just want something that's a bit more risky to play but is potentially a little bit better for 60 seconds when your spotting aircraft is up and when you have the engine boost consumable active. Other than that, the Mainz does everything better, and I, I get what they were going for here, you know, a Mainz at tier 7 with a little bit of a twist to it, sure. But practically wise, again, with the way that matchmaking has changed, this ship is, you know, great when you get in top tier and you're dunking on some tier 5 ships with these guns. It's great for that. But the truth is that doesn't happen too much anymore to tier 7 ships. So you're better off just getting the mines and spending your money there. This is, you know, if, if you get the ship in a container, great, fine. It's a cool ship. It is a good ship in my opinion. The only thing is, might still exist and is still for sale. So go buy that instead of this. And again, if you get the ship for free from whatever, it's not a bad ship. Not a bad ship at all. You can throw your mines commander on there and potentially go seal clubs and tier 5 ships. But that's just about it. No reason to buy this as long as the might is still in the game, in my opinion. And that's my review of the Tier 7 Premium German Cruiser, the Weimar. So, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. 
you're planning on picking it up, you're planning on passing on it, just let me know down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. When we hit 30,000 subs, just past 27,100 a few days ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.